Hello and welcome to the Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast. My name is Brent Colby. And my name is Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. Uh, Brent. <laughs> yes, Stephen. What's, what's on your face? Well, you know, today, Stephen, we're talking about no, using Brent, technology. Brent. Over here, man. Over here. Oh, sorry. Okay. Today we're talking about using technology in your children's ministries, and no, we're excited. No, to, over here. There. No, sorry. no, no. In your children's no. ministries, and we're excited to use a few different new, what? It's okay. Right? Oh, got yeah, it, got it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what are we talking about? Today we're talking about leveraging technology in your children's ministry. That's right, and today's episode, as always, is not sponsored by Hair Max. Twice a day, every day, and you can continue to grow your own natural hair. So, Stephen, before I share my something awesome with you today, I have to point out something a little bit different about today's episode, and that is that we are recording live here at the Fusion That's Children's right. Ministry Conference. Yeah! We are with the people. We are here, live. And some of us thought it was wise to give them all sorts of projectiles in the background, so. Yeah. If you see anyone get knocked out on video, call 911. We will the, need your help. It's the cameraman who's super safe. He's like, oh, hey, what can I do to knock these guys out? So oh anyways, boy. we're excited to be here, be here at the Fusion Children's Ministry Conference. This year, we are hosted yeah. at Stone Church in Yakima, Washington. If it's nothing you've never been to before, we'd love to invite you to come check it out. Come on out. It'll be happening next November, every November. So you can log on to nwministry.com and see when that podcast happens. Yeah, podcast conference happens. Fantastic. So here is something awesome I do want to share with you before. Okay. This is called the Nintendo Classic. And at the time of recording this episode, it went on right. sale yesterday, and it sold out in like a few seconds. So this is the Nintendo that you know and love from maybe your childhood. But this Nintendo is well, about... hold on. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not okay. as old as you. You know, love from my childhood. It's about the size of this block here. It's okay. super tiny. You plug it straight into your TV with HDMI, and on the Nintendo Classic is like 60 different video games, 60 of your favorite Nintendo video games. And so just plugging them in once you have access Do to all those games. Do they have the Noah's Ark game, though, where you would go around and collect all the animals and watch out for the snakes? You'd throw them in the ark? That's a good question. I don't think they have. I had that game growing up. That's, that was great. A good game. It was like the only video game I think my grandma felt good buying yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be like Bible-themed. <laughs> So we had that one. We had, there was like a, uh, there's the Noah's Ark one. There's like a David one where I think he just ran around throwing rocks. Yeah. 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 There or, was some like pixelated like Goliath in the background and then a tiger would come out and like put his <laughs> arms up and it's like, yeah, no, it's bad. It's bad. Oh, anyways. <laughs> so today we're talking about leveraging technology in your ministry. Yes. And we live in a high tech world, right? Yeah. Yes, I, mean, like I opened the Nintendo. up like the Nintendo from 1980 something. Yeah. Uh, this theater, this is just a 3D, uh, 3D like uh, face mask thing. You plug your phone in. There's a lot of these out there, but the technology, as always, seems to just be going quicker and quicker and quicker. And a lot of times, so fast. we feel like we struggle to keep up with it in our church, and we don't really know what to do or if we even should try to keep up with that stuff. Yeah, you, every, it's like in a year. You might be really excited about buying something. You're like, oh, I'm getting this thing. It's just gonna revolutionize the way that we're doing stuff. And by the time you buy it the next like version is already out and you're just right. like what I don't have enough money to go and get this next version already it's 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 lame they need like I know it's awesome that it's fast but at least give us a one day to enjoy right it. right so what do you do in your church what technology do you guys integrate into your church and like how fancy are you guys oh uh the, i think the biggest piece of technology that we use in our children's area would be at least for the stage stuff, would be some sort of like presentation program. We use ProPresenter 5, not 6, so not even the newest okay. one, right? Um, and we, we, everything kind of revolves around that piece. But we, you could do what we're doing in PowerPoint. Um, you could do it in uh, Key, whatever Apple's one is. I don't know if anyone even uses that one. But you could do it. You could do it. Um, so I think that's the biggest piece of technology we use. But the thing about technology is... And it's a really easy trap to get into. We start building our gatherings or our services around this cool new piece of tech instead of what it really should be about. Right. Right. Instead of, instead of driving kids towards a moment or uh, uh, learning that Jesus loves them more than anything in the entire universe, it's like, 
hey, we got this new smoke machine, so let's build our entire Sunday around <laughs> how we can use this smoke machine because we paid for it, so now we got to use it. Yes, the old smoke machine Sunday. I've right, had yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, I've had those yeah. services. And then you got the, the, one, the one poor kid with allergies, and it's like <laughs> vapor, but they don't know, and they go into, you know, You're frantically and everything. looking through your Bible for any story that has smoke in it. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what, like Shadrach, Meshach, <laughs> smoke. Hey, three of you kids, come up on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were thrown into a furnace. Oh, yeah. We have, I remember, um, we started at one church one time, and they had a video game room. And I thought, oh. this was like, for me at least at the time, this was the apex of children's ministry yeah, coolness. Yeah. To have a bunch of video games set up in your lobby for that kids could actually play. Right. And I remember going through different phases of, like, loving and hating the video games. Because it was cool because the kids would want to come to church but then I realized they didn't really want to come to church. They just wanted to come and play the video games, right? So the first five minutes, ten minutes, as we're checking everybody in, getting started, it right. was wonderful because the boys were just, like, glued to the thing. They were like... Every video game system is, like, five volunteers almost. <laughs> it is. For, like, keeping then, kids engaged but, or crowds. And we would start church, and the boys would, like, hate church because church was getting in the way of them playing more video <laughs> games. It yeah. was like... You, you go... They, you say, everyone, bow your heads, close your eyes. You see the ten boys in the front row all of a sudden run to the back <laughs> as fast as they can so they can get to the video game systems before anybody else... Yeah, and Come I'm on. I'm a super geeky guy. I love a lot of technology stuff, yeah. but I find it sometimes be, can become a really big distraction. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I find the most impactful thing to do with kids is not all high tech, but actually some of the low tech stuff almost catches them off guard. Yeah. The actual physical props to have a physical thing to actually do a game where they have to wrestle around and like actually be in contact with each yeah. other or a thing like Sometimes those leave the greatest impact on kids, and it's not some new tablet or app or something like that. Right, and, and technology, like anything, is a tool, and it's a, it can be a very powerful tool to get a point across or do something very specific that you need to do. But if you don't understand the rules behind like why you would use that then or why it's going to be a, a good thing, then it's, it's not, it's not going to be as good as you think it is. It's kind of like in, in photography. We see photographers a lot, and they go, oh, man, you know what, they take just fantastic photos because they got a really fancy camera over there, right? And in reality, that photographer's probably thinking, no, we could switch cameras, and because I know how to take a good photo. Your pictures will still suck. Yeah, yeah. and you can take mine, and <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not going to be the same. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing with technology. You might think, oh, this is what's going to take my ministry to the next level, and it, it, it usually it doesn't ever yeah, end up that yeah. way. I think a lot of us, just practically speaking, the best way to leverage technology in our ministry is to help us communicate what we're trying to say with the kids. Yeah. And a lot of it is what's up on screen, very simple visual cues, things like that. Right. There's a few websites I use to help find just free online resources to help communicate visually with kids. One is open dot life dot church yeah it's a great one yeah they have so many resources on there if you go to the website there you can see there's just tons of stuff from completely themed things they've even launched a bunch of apps. i mean there's just tons yeah. tons of resources there it's a great spot to check things out yeah they are probably the largest online resource probably in uh, if not the world in the nation for sure for free resources they got it all i mean they have entire like two-year curriculums that are almost plug and play for just about any church. It's right. really awesome. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking for something or you're in between curriculums or your yeah. budgets run out. And Even you just to... backgrounds or videos or B-roll or anything that you need, they got it on there. It, graphics, all of it. it. It's awesome. Another one is at creationswap.com. Yeah. There's a, a you know, they have some limitations on how much stuff you can download each month, each month but it's high quality stuff. I mean, that is a great way yeah. to um, just get some great resources, background, motion video type stuff. Right themes, if you have a sermon series. I mean, there's tons of stuff. And that works in your children's ministries or even for your main services upstairs. There's great resources there as yeah. well. So as what, what would you say is like a, fi like a good uh, last takeaway? Something that, you know, one thought for them with this, like what, what, what would that be? I would say use technology in the context of what you're trying to communicate and don't put the technology in front of what you're trying to communicate. So good. it has to be it has to support your message, not come in between where the kids are at and the message you're trying to communicate. Yeah. And I would say before going out and buying the, the newest tech or whatever thing that's out there, uh, there are people in your church, in your community, that are probably really good with this kind of stuff yeah. and can probably make whatever you have work a lot better for you. You'd be surprised what someone who knows what they're doing can do with what 
we might consider inferior tech, and which is all of a sudden it's like, whoa, that's all I needed. I didn't need to go spend $2,000 on something. Right. So really, you know, just remember to get your ask in gear and go find those people. That's good. That's a good word. And get them on your team. That's good. All right. Hey, before we go, Stephen, I want to play a game with everybody. Hey, you oh. guys got your phones with you? Okay, Love pull your games. cell phones out. Now, this is a game we're going to play Screen. at the app. What you need to do is go to, here's your code, 505536. All right, go ahead and log in. And here's why you're going to want to be playing here in the audience today is because our top Ooh, three finalists are going to be receiving copies of our Fusion Children's Ministry books, one, two, and three, and also registration, free registration for what? Fusion 2017. Whoa. All right, so top three finalists. There's only seven questions that we have 16 Whoa. players in. Whoa. 17, 18, 20, 21. Okay, oh, we'll man. give it a few more seconds. Five zero five five three six. I don't know if you guys can see that where you're Blade. at. Blade. That's, That's awesome. your code. Blade. Jet. <laughs> okay, very go. Lauren. Noah the Narwhal. Thanks Lauren for joining. Beach. Okay. There were 37, 39. Lit up. We'll give you a few more seconds. The, okay, lit. Cheese. Okay. We had a controversial a trivia night last night at the conference where one team really, really ran away with it. So there's been an investigation to see whether Trump. Or not they were cheating. Trump's in. Okay, Trump. He has nothing better to do. Yeah, we really have no filter what they could put on there. So. We'll just, okay, 55. <laughs> there we go, 10 more seconds. This is your chance. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, hurry up. 3, 2, here we go. First question is, are you ready? Fusion CM Podcast quiz. Yeah, I'm ready. Are, are you ready? last name is just like a That's red turtle, blue crab. Yellow fish, green monkey. I know the answer to this one. Here, I'll fit 13. Since it's me. Yes. Steven's last not, name is just like a not the one who red turtle, blue crab, yellow Bible. fish, this green one. monkey. This Steven. Okay, three, two, one. I really hope we The get correct to... answer is fish. Steven. How many people said monkey? Yes! <laughs> Five yes. monkeys. Steven, what's your last name, Steven? Steven Salmon, just, just like, like the, the fish. fish. Here we go. Top three, we have Steve. Brianna and J Dub coming in the top three. It's very, Hold very on. close. My girlfriend's in the audience. She didn't get the top answer on that. <laughs> Don't take it personally. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Question number two is how many books are there in the Bible? Here are your options. Ready? Red 66, blue 32, yellow 110, green 58. Christian Bible or? Well, that's a good question. Sorry. Here we go. Ten seconds. Eight, seven, six. What's the answer, Stephen? Do you know? This is on the ordination test, I think. I think. You just took that, didn't you? The correct <laughs> answer is 66. And, okay, pretty much all of us got that right. That's good. 59. There's a few of us need to take some Bible classes, but that's it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll talk it out about it in our breakout session. Ooh, Brianna taking the lead. Brianna. And J-Dub. J-Dub. Hold on. Matt and Jesse. What is this? Tag team? Share. You don't have a smartphone, so Matt. Okay, well, Matt and Jesse, here we go. Question right. number three. What does the CM infusion CM stand for? Is Ooh, it tough one? Red, tough. candid memoir, yep. blue, children's ministries, nope. yellow, calico mud, yep. or green, creative mastodon. What does CM stand for? Creative mastodon? It's one of the options. The answer is blue children's ministries. Okay, we did have two people think it was Creative Mastodon and one Calico Mud. Maybe we should change it. We should change it, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, scoreboard, J-Dub, Matt and Jesse, Brianna, Brianna, Brianna coming in, the top three. There's only a few points separating our top three contenders right now. Here we go. Next question is this. Brent's favorite espresso drink is? <laughs> Not from Dutch Bros. Eggnog latte, blue, cappuccino, Yellow, white mocha with extra whipped cream, or green espresso. It better not Favorite be Favorite espresso drink circle. is eggnog, cappuccino, white mocha with extra whipped cream, or espresso. What do you think it is? Do you know? You should know. Uh, espresso. Espresso. That's right. Let's not mess around. It's espresso. White mocha with extra whip. Ooh, Big Come Dan coming in front. Matt and Jesse, Josiah. Brianna, what's happening? You fell off. Ugh. 
Combo Jojo, Breaker 19. Jojo the singer? Jojo. Who's Jojo out there? Jo Jojo. Oh, Jolene. Okay, here we go. Next question is this. Number five. Ehud yes. from the Bible is known for yes. red being a Nazarite, blue being left-handed, circle being a ginger, or green being from Yakima. Which one of these is Ehud from the Bible known for red, Nazarite, blue, left-handed, yellow being a ginger, or green being from Yakima? It is being left-handed. Very good. Ooh, only 20, only about half of us got that. I just rose my left hand. Yeah, not a Nazarite. At least I don't think he was. Might have been I'm both. just going to say no. Big Dan. Big Dan. Oh, Brando's back in the top three. And Nick C coming and, in strong. And just B. Just B. Someone, B. someone was a little late getting in. They wanted to make sure they got it. So they're just like B. B. Send. Got it. Here we go. Next question is, how many calories are in a cup of goldfish crackers? Hold on, are we talking about ministers? like the exploder? Red, goldfish? 266. Blue, 135. Yellow, 200. Or green, none. Snacks don't count. Are these the new like gluten free goldfish no, that you can actually serve in church now? Classic and... goldfish. Classic. Red, 266. Blue, 135. Yellow, 200. It's not 266 because I'm always hungry. What? 266! Wow. Ooh, way more than everybody thought. Okay, here we are. This is before the final round. Oh, Brianna's B. at the top. B, JoJo, B Lauren Beach, Big Dan. Now, this is our seventh and final question, which means after this round, we will have our top three finalists, which we will award our prizes and wrap up this week's episode of the Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast. Stephen, this, are you ready? Is this the Dan that we both know? I don't know. Big Dan. Who's Big Dan? Big Dan, reveal yourself. Yeah. There, oh, wow. There okay, he here we go. <clears throat> here we go. The seventh and final question. Will you come to Fusion next year? Ooh, trick question. Think hard. You can win up to 1,000. Yes, no. I didn't really think that some people could answer no. Oh, red is yes, blue is no. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize some people could actually mark Awkward. no on this, which would be a little embarrassing for us. So I'm hey. just now preparing myself for that. Eat dessert first. Here we go. The correct answer is yes. So 57 are coming back. Six are we'll not. We'll just chalk it up. They didn't know well, blue. They hit the no. wrong. It they was a mistake. No, they didn't know. So are you ready? For the final top three winners are in first place, Brianna, second Brianna. place, B, and third place, JoJo. Congratulations. You guys can come up in a second and claim your prize. But Great for me, job, everyone. Brent Colby. Steven Salmon, signing off. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.